Today on What Went Wrong, we talk about the mistakes you make when you're just starting out. Man, this is some bullshit. <laughs> Hi, I'm Brett Malger, and I made over 40 feature films. And today we're joined by, introduce yourself. Carlos Leos. I'm in the building. AKA I'm in the building, AKA Amard Ethel, I'm in the building. Now we first started working on, we, we, we first worked together on your music video, All with All in the Family or uh, mm. AITF. Man, you bringing up some old, you trying party. to, you didn't tell me he's going to bring up All in the Family, man. I didn't know we were going to sit here and talk about them. We were just talking about them. Yes, sort of. So All in the Family was, was kind of a conglomerate. It, right it was a it, it was designed because we, we were talking about earlier how back in the day these major labels were, were trying to go in and, and and become independent so they can go after these independent artists and so the design behind all in the family was uh, I wanted to put together a bunch of different you know heavy hitting groups out of uh, that were doing things out of Fort Worth and so we, we connected with a few of these people and decided you know what it's all in the family each one of these groups will kind of have their time to shine and you know this group or you know whichever one we decided to go first will put their stuff out and everybody just got together and was like well you know dub you know you're you're kind of the thing that makes this thing work so you know why don't we put your group out first and and so we had that uh, that one song that was getting some pretty good rotation on the radio and you know all that kind of stuff so we were like let's shoot a video we need it yeah so <laughs> hey shout out to the 20 riders <laughs> shout out nuno shout out second dub b the, uh, speaking of second, he is our very original Smokey. He was now, oh, now in, in the, we, we created something called the Last Blood Trilogy. It was Barrio Angel, Shadow Dragon, and, and Cartel Killers. Damn. But what we, what we mentioned before, but not a lot of people know, is Cartel Killers was actually shot first. That was the first film that you and I were ever in. Together, yeah. You know, that we worked together on. And I specifically remember handing you this script and you reading it and going, but I can't talk like this. I can't read this. I was like, just, just, just get around it. Just, you know, say, make it your own. And I do remember, like, the next time when I gave you Barrio Angels, you were like, now this I can read. <laughs> because I had worked with you, and I knew how you talked, yeah. and I could, I could write for that. Yeah. So how did, when, when, <laughs> what went through your mind? Because I usually write with, in my head with a British accent. <laughs> <laughs> But well, that's great because I usually read with a British accent. <laughs> I mean, like no contra no contractions, no, you know, just we cannot do this. <laughs> I'm asking you to speak like a like a British posh, <laughs> like basically writing for Samira. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that British from the hijacking. I really must say that you're not winning me over with your choice of words. What? You're not British. But that was your first experience as, as basically an on-screen actor, right? Yeah. Uh, so how did how did that go? What was what was the expectations, and then versus how it turned out? Well, you know, I didn't have any expectations. You know, I, I guess I guess maybe that's kind of the beauty of, you know, not having acting classes and you know all that kind of stuff is, I didn't know I didn't know what I was getting into. You know, you know, as we had talked about earlier, you know, I was just listening to what Buddy's direction. Buddy was like, you know, these these people are trying to set you up for success. You know, shout out to Buddy Miles. Um, you know, he was like, you know, these people are trying to set you up for success. You know, you need to be a part of that. And so, you know, that's when I called you up. And I think we had a conversation about, based on what you had seen in the video, you had originally had another character for me, but then you wanted me to play like, you know, this other character, which later on I obviously learned was Detective Thomas. But, you know, I, I think I think going into that, my expectation was I just want to give you what you want. You know, like that. that's, I just want to make sure I didn't disappoint you. So. You know, that's why I think maybe when you gave me it, I was like, uh, uh, I ain't no actor, man. Uh, I don't really know if I could do this. <laughs> so, you know, but it was cool working with you because that, that very first time, never having any experience, I think, is, is what set me up for all of my experiences later on. You uh, lied to me, Smokey. You're one of El Cucho's hitmen. I never lied. You just assumed I was smuggling. You were on El Cucho's payroll two years ago when you got out. True. And you were a hitman. True. So where you and El Cucho meet? You, I can't tell you that. Give me that before you hurt yourself. Cause you were like, just, just be you. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna give it a shot. Yeah. And, and I think we, you and I were talking about that this weekend about bad actors. And, yeah. and we just sit there and how can you not act? You just be yourself and put yourself in that situation. Yeah. You know, worst case scenario. So yeah, and 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 you you had such an outgoing personality. I knew. 
you were gonna be you know you were gonna be great on camera. Yeah, thank you, man. Um, and, and you're fun to watch. You just you know, and, and you do improvise and you throw out you know throw out some lines and and you help bring you know everybody on on set to kind of see that they get it. Yeah. When, when you start, it's it's important to me. You know, especially you know obviously hindsight. You know, you you do you know with as many films as I've done later on. You know, obviously the majority credited to you. Um, you know, when when I when I look back and you know I start you know. You know, we talk about growing as an actor and, you know, in your characters, but then you realize, you know, the further along that you get, you begin to realize, you know, when, when other people are on set, man, this is, this is it. This is my family. This is, you know, it's, it's time to shine. You know what I mean? And, and if I can do anything to help anybody else shine, if, if there's anything that they need from me, you know, if they need me to pull back or go over the top a little bit more, or, you know, anything I've, I've kind of learned throughout the years, I can still be myself, um, but I can still kind of take direction very well. So, you know. So moving on to, to, to the, the films themselves. Uh, now I do remember uh, one of the very first nights that we shot was was at a rest stop on on, on thirty five. I guess it was up the road here, and it was this. It was the hijack, the, the hijacking scene. Uh, now keeping in mind that during this movie we had no lights, we yeah. had no professional lights. Uh, all we had were the natural lights that were there, and we showed up. Uh, now we shot this scene twice because the first time we shot it. It was dark and everything, but when we sold it, they said, hey, can you brighten it up? And we were like, oh, let's just reshoot it. Yeah. And that's when we brought you down to reshoot off the uh, in Austin. And remember those, uh, while we were on set out there, they found the, all those that bone graveyard. Oh, I do remember that. I'm sitting here trying to rack my brain. I'm like, man, I, man we shot so much, dude. I don't really remember what scene you're talking and about. And one of our actors was an actual homicide detective. Yes. And that's where we got the, the, the yes. vice jacket and everything. The guy. What was, I forgot the guy's uh, Eric name. Eric DeLosanto. Yes. Yeah. And he played it, it, Captain Jensen. Yes. So he had to call, when, when they found all those bones. They actually had to call somebody that night. <laughs> <laughs> I was hiding just in case, just in case they needed somebody to put that on. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah, it wasn't me. I just got here, man. I'm out of town. <laughs> but that was, but you, we also, uh, that, that was also your experience of getting splashed with fake blood. Oh, man. That was such a great scene. I, I, I mean, I, you know, I'm, let me cut you off, man. That's, no, no, that's no. a great scene. Even even though that was uh, that was that was my second partner, right? I, mm -hmm. I don't believe that was Yolanda. That was that it was well. The first time we shot it was Yolanda, right? And then and the then second when we, one, we shot it. We couldn't get in touch with some people, and yeah. she unfortunately was one. So we brought Sarah in, yeah. to reshoot that. Yeah. Uh, but both times you got splashed with blood. So there's either me or Brad right off camera <laughs> throwing a cup of blood in your face. And I think the first couple of times it didn't work, so we had to throw it a few times. Yeah. Uh, and then they, we, we dragged them over the hood of the car. Yeah. And uh, I know the, the, the second time, maybe the first time, I don't remember, but the second time I know Samira wasn't there. Mm. So all of her stuff had to be shot separately um, in, in cutaways. I think somebody went to you. I don't even think I shot him. I think I sent Scott to you to shoot funny. them. Or something. One of the main issues of that film was no lights. Um, and that's one of the reasons that we had to reshoot that scene for the distributor. And we still didn't really have, well, we had lights at that point, but we were out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. So there was no outlets. Yeah. So we had to use that little candle light, that thing. And Brad was walking around with an umbrella and we were shooting the light into the umbrella to <laughs> get light on everybody. And he's chasing everybody around trying that, to get that, light. Dude, that night, I mean, I, you know, I, I won't lie. I won't try to fabricate any things I remember. I don't remember a whole bunch about that night, but I remember that scene. And I, I, if, if I'm not mistaken, I think we only had one last time to get that scene mm -hmm. with that blood that you guys had. And it was perfect. Like that, that very last scene came out perfect. But I was so surprised, I think, that it was perfect <laughs> that I thought I had messed up. And you were like, no, no, no. That's keep going. Keep going. Yeah. Keep going. <laughs> I was saying, I was Davies. <laughs> but that was more of a I messed up. <laughs> And, but it was the perfect reaction, though. I mean, you, I mean, I still remember that specifically. You just get splattered, and your eyes are wide open like, what the f*** just happened? Because it wasn't supposed to hit me. It messed up the other few times. <laughs> that was great, man. I had a lot of fun shooting that film, man. There's so many scenes I remember that. Even, every, even now and then, I'll just kind of be sitting there chilling. I'll just remember little things that we did, you know, when we were on the set or little things that happened. 
um, the pushing Nuno in. Yeah, the I was pool. just going. I was just about to talk about that scene. <laughs> had to push Nuno in the pool. But what I remember most of that is that Smokey the second, you know, had like four or five lines of dialogue. I couldn't get it. And we tried shot after <laughs> shot after shot, and the sun was going down. And I said. And I brought Scott into the back, into the inside of the house, and I just start with a red pen, scribbling this, scribbling that, and then I came back out here, just say these <laughs> lines. Poor second man. And Nuno was great, man. I, I like Nuno all the way, all the way in into in. I think where was that at Corpus or was that here? In that San was here Antonio? in San Antonio. All the way into San Antonio. I I remember I remember Nuno, Nuno you know Nuno's always you know North Star baby. All the way in, he was he was like, man, I'm nervous, dub. I, I, you know what I'm saying? I can't lie to you, man. I'm nervous. I was like, man, what are you nervous about, man? You'd be great. I remember he was a trooper because at first he was like, y'all going to push me in the pool? <laughs> <laughs> when we kind of put that on him, he was like, I was like, oh, he's going to kill Brett. <laughs> Nuno is going to murder Brett. It's a 187 out here in San Antonio, and I done drove the dude out here, man. I'm an accomplice to murder, man. I'm like, no, no, please don't. He's like, no, no, I'm good. Let's do it. <laughs> you sure? Let's do it. I was like, damn, Brett, Nuno said he good with it, man. <laughs> and I, I remember, he, like, we pushed him in that first time. And I'll never forget, when he when he went in the pool, he came out. He was like, yeah, Dell, I'm good. I'm ready to do it again. <laughs> Smokey messed up the first line. And he was like, well, I was like, well, Nuno, we're going to have to do it again anyway, man. So we got him out of that. Smokey messed up again. And then Nuno started getting mad. Because Smokey, he was like, man, come on, Come on, baby, you can't keep pushing me in the pool, man. <laughs> and the last shot we got, I remember, I was like, man, I, I don't know how they're going to fix this, man, because his pants are still wet <laughs> from the first time we pushed him in. And, I, and it still came out. that it, it, it was just such a great shot. And I think second was so, I think he understood that Nuno was pissed because mm-hmm. he was like, yeah, he just got it. <laughs> he, he just got it the last time. He was like, man, come on. <laughs> it's just perfect, dude. It was, it's, it's nothing like intimidating actors to get stuff right, man. Yeah. Bring gangsters on set, man. That's what you do. <laughs> it wasn't shot in that long of a period of time. I think this was, we had you for a couple weekends or something, and then yeah. we had that weekend up in, in Austin where it was all the all the professional killers were meeting in the house, and we got all of that stuff in, like, one day. Oh, yeah. That was, you know what, that turned out, actually, remember, I talked about that scene for months and months, man, because mm-hmm. that was the fruit. That was something about the fruit, right? What was the line? Um, you, uh, the, the guy, I can't remember the guy's name. The, 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 uh, not the guy that kills people. I carry my Bible. Oh, I kill Lupe, people. Yeah, the, that dude, I Loveless. love that dude, man. Shout out to Loveless. Read your Bible. The world's greatest sin is being a... Love that dude, man. I, do you ever work with him? No, I mean, we worked. We brought him back for White and Black. Yeah. Uh, and then he, that's one of the ones that just got lost in the vapor. We just lost touch. Ah, oh, man, I love that dude. Him. Loveless, if you see this, man, hit me up, baby. I want to work with you again. Yep. That's my dude. Because he was supposed to have a whole movie to himself. We were supposed to go delve into his whole backstory. Because of the way he delivered that character, because man. Because of that character. No more of whatever it is you do for fun. Oh, I read my Bible. Or I kill people. I mean, I was on set. I was in awe. I was like, man, this dude has got to be like from Hollywood or some stuff, man. This dude is killing this role. He wasn't. But what was the other dude's name? The, the, I don't remember the other guy's name. The one that said, you think it's more than a fruit? Or he, like, he could not get that damn line. It was like an hour and a half we sat there, man. At first it was cute. I was like, yeah, this, this is funny as hell. And then after a while it was like, full if you don't get this damn line right, you got three lines. You got three words in this line, man. What was the dude's name? Uh, uh, I know who you're talking. Suerte. It was a guy who played Suerte, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, well, his name's not important now that we know who yeah. he plays. But what it was it? You think? What was the line, man? It was something about a fruit, man. I talked about that fruit for months, man. Anyway, I can't remember. Yeah, I, don't I remember blocked either. it out of my head. But that was that night, right? When yeah. all the killers were meeting at that house. Yeah. That was the house that was down the street from Sandra Bullock, right? Mm-hmm. If I'm yes, not mistaken. I was good at that. That was the one I was going to. That's the night I fell in love with Sandra Bullock because I kept peeking over. There. I was like, "What the? Where's she at? She all she need to do is see your boy, man. That's all that needs to happen, man. I'm telling you, man. This little uh, cowboy stuff she got going on is going to change." 
Well, there was a there was another scene, completely, completely changing directions here. But the uh, uh, the scene uh, there was a scene in Scott's garage. Scott played Hank. Yeah. And uh, you were investigating Polly's murder. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And the, and and basically the guy who was gonna play Polly dropped out at the last minute. Yep. So we had to scramble. And Will Will Majors, God Majors. bless him, he came out. He got a phone call, and an hour later he was over at the he house. He showed up, drowned in blood. With a and, and and we had gone to we were okay he's gonna rip it, she's gonna rip his heart out yeah so we go to H E B and we get a calf's heart yeah which was about this big <laughs> yeah and I think we said something about we, that in the film got a big heart though I see that it's got <laughs> like I can see that <laughs> and he's sitting there poking it with a dipstick yeah. yeah but yeah and then and then yeah he because here he is drowned in blood not knowing what the hell's yep. going on. And then we and he wound up being such a great freaking actor. We brought him back and created Paul because he was originally Polly yeah. and we turned him into Weasel and yeah. brought him into Barrio Angels. Yeah. When we when you know because after one or two years, uh, maybe two years, we came back and revisited and and, and made the prequel because there was that whole there was a little bit of in the original script there was a little bit of Barrio Angels in that in regards to the Janice character. Yeah. But we never shot it and it was going to give her a little backstory. And then we turned that into Barrio Angels and expanded it with the, with the actual girls riding motorcycles. Yeah. And that's when we brought you back, and we were still and we were in Corpus at that time. We brought you back. We brought you down, and Brad and I were still. That was the first time you met Brad. Yeah. And I was working. We were both working at WB, so we would lock you in the apartment during the day. <laughs> literally lock you in the apartment and not let you go anywhere. Man, you tell you talk about a nervous time, man. That first time I met y'all, man, being locked in uh, two white dudes' apartments <laughs> because I got to do a film. <laughs> but we like, left you. But we left you with like a, a Nintendo or something. As long as I had my video games, I was good. I think it probably was a Nintendo too, man. That's, I couldn't even get the PlayStation, man. That's how they did me, man. I can't even get the PlayStation. I'm locked in this place. God bless Bradley. I Bradley Bates. I remember when I first met that dude, man. It's it was it was sad. It was a well, sad I day. Well, I think your first scene with him was with Tim. And yeah, uh, and and those guys, Tin, Tin and uh, I can't remember his uh, uh, his other name, but the, the the first scene of Barrio Angels, where you're out in the middle of nowhere. I match. Do you see this? No, look at me. Yeah, but she look like red, a... red and white. Do you see my shoes? Red and white. I match. Dude, you sound like that f-ing movie, like coordinate. Got to coordinate. You do have to coordinate, man. So, oh, that's right. You have the car, and then you have the drug deal that goes wrong. That's right. And that was, I think, the first time you met him, Brad. Yeah, that's. I brought some more gangsters that yeah. night too, didn't mm-hmm. I? Good lord, I've, I'm gonna need you to edit that part. I didn't bring no gangsters <laughs> to be on the part of no films. All names and uh, faces were changed to protect the innocent. Um, yeah, I remember that. I, I forgot it was another rap group that I brought out. I think mm-hmm. that you did some videos for as well. I can't remember the name of the rap group, but I probably should better save it anyway, just in case. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, I remember, I think they were in that film as well. And then, uh, I, if I'm not mistaken, I, I think Brad might have been a little nervous a couple of times around these dudes, like saying some of the things that he, is, that he was saying. If I'm right, it sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. Brad, Brad would, Brad would say, say something and then, re- and then kind of start pulling it back. <laughs> And because he would, because he, he's so used to just any people knowing him, and then he started realizing well, these guys, these this isn't dub. These guys are for real, and he'd start, you know, then he'd get real. Yeah. Real. But then he wouldn't. But then he would. You know, he had to save face, so he would kind of push back more, which would get him in more trouble. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that man, and you know what was funny about it is I think I, I think I remember talking to those dudes about that and telling them how funny it was, and they thought it was funny, like they 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 weren't gonna do anything, man. They they just thought it was funny as hell watching this dude, and then there was that one scene I think where he dove. Mm-hmm. I think there's a scene like if I'm not mistaken that made it to like a trailer or something. Yeah, from and he the, dives behind the the wood. There. And they loved that, like they thought this dude was a like I ain't trying to gash your head up, Bradley, if you're watching, just so you know, but they loved you, man. <laughs> Yeah, they thought this dude was like a superstar. They were like, man, this dude's diving and stuff. I was like, what about me, fool? I got punched in the face, man. Y'all didn't see that? <laughs> yeah, man, that was great, man. Shout out Bradley Bates, man. Shout out. Unorthodox players. That is exactly who it was. Shout out OP. Yeah, man, that's right. In fact, they were uh, 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 Swisher House. They were a uh, Swisher House label. With uh, Woodgrain Boys, Breeze and Thyra. Breeze and Thyra were also in a film. Yeah, they, 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 and that goes into the third film we shot in that, which was actually the middle movie. And they played Vomit and Bile. <laughs> <laughs> 
Shout out to Breeze and Thyrus. Shout out to Woodgrain Boys. You don't got to cut that. That's my boys right there, man. Shout out to my boys, man. I, damn, man. You keep, I keep, this. it's like, it's just like deja vu. It's like popping up like little bitty pieces. I can't, that is so funny. You know what? I remember um, uh, Breeze. I think I think Breeze did his line so well that Thyra couldn't get his lines right, <laughs> if, or, or maybe I had it backwards. I can't remember, but one of them had like little bit of lines, and he was just like, "I see two dead bodies, one white boy, one brother. I see badges around their necks, one vice jacket and one homicide jacket, and I see six bullets in each of their stomachs and one in each of their heads." That sounds like Detective Maltz and Detective Washington. Great stuff, man. Oh. Wow. And then, and then we carried over from Barrio Angels into Shadow Dragon, uh, your improv fights with Brad. Yeah. Where you basically just rolled around on the ground. You <laughs> 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 pretended to fight each other. Oh, yeah. You sit the f*** down, f Oh, God. Right on it, Brad. I think we did a few of those. <laughs> That's hilarious, man. Yeah. And that was the days where I would just okay, just before like before I met someone like Matt to choreograph the fights. Again. Yeah. Like I just 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 fight out, stuff. cut it together, and it'll yeah. be fine. I think it came out pretty well, though, man. Yeah. I mean, you know, given Especially for what it was. You know? Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I like that. Uh, I like that end scene where we're just kind of laying there, both kind of out of breath, and just kind of looking at each other like, huh. Man, uh, that was just great. Those, 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 those are such great films, man. So, do, what, uh, what would you say? What are some of the things that went wrong on that set that you oh, remember? F everything. <laughs> 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 what, what went right? That's um, um, damn. Uh, I think me showing up was the first thing that went wrong. <laughs> That's, uh... <laughs> um, you know what? I, I, I think I would. The first thing I really remember, but well, the only thing that I that comes to mind right now is is me being a diva. You know that. Hey, listen, I well, that, that didn't start coming on until bad mode. Was that later? Was my head getting a little bigger by then? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, in the first ones, you know, I, I I think I I didn't know enough about the industry. I think back then to realize what might have been going wrong or you know anything like that. I think, you know, for me, the only thing that I could see going wrong when I was there is just you know how come. It's taking so long, because <laughs> I, I was I wasn't a part of that world. I didn't well, now that you've been on other sets, do you now see how fast we move? On yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Things are different. Things now are... you're on other people's sets. You're like, how come it's taking these <clears throat> so long when it took Mauser three hours to do this? You know? Yes, no, no. I mean, I mean, again, hindsight, right? <laughs> you know, you you look back, you work with a lot of different directors and other producers and things like that. And you're like, Brett is Brett knows what he's doing. <laughs> You know, it, it really, really points you back to when you get your start, you know, and, you know, just even if, even though if we're kind of bouncing around a little bit, you know, just going to the to that to that diva role that I began to kind of shift into, um, which we'll talk about. And I will apologize later for. But, uh, um, you know, you, you, you begin to learn a lot even through that. You know, looking back, I didn't I, you know, I didn't know how to be a diva on a film. I was never on a damn film. But then all of a sudden I'm, I'm signing autographs. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, what the? From a film, I've been in music since I'm like 11 years old. I ain't never signed no damn autograph, you know. So, um, you know, I think um, I don't really know what went wrong. I, you know, I, I really don't know. Looking back, I realized what was going wrong. It was a big ass heart from H E B. That's one damn thing, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. I, I think I, 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 you know, bringing my girlfriend out to play another dude's girlfriend. Shout out to Misha. Um, you know, stuff like that. You know, probably shouldn't have done that because she ended up getting married to somebody else. But, you know, shortly after that. So that didn't work out so well. That went wrong. Um, but, uh, you know, I think um, I, for not learning the lines <laughs> uh, is definitely something I've, I've learned that was wrong. You know, not showing, definitely could have saved some time. Um, uh, you know, I think... Uh, um, <laughs> I'm worrying about some mushu every time I hit town. You know, I, need, I like sushi. Sushi. So, you know, every time I hit town, worrying about the mushu. Um, yeah. <laughs> which, speaking of which, we will cover in depth in, uh, <laughs> in Bad Mojo Project when we discuss that coming up next time on What Went Wrong. <laughs>